Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to a brand new series. This is F1 Manager 23. I'm Joe, if you're new around here, and make sure you click that subscribe button for daily F1 Manager videos. We're going to be doing two videos a day for the first two weeks of release. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Last year, it was an incredible success on the channel. Um, once again, thank you for that. It would be great if we could hit the ground running with this series this year. Um, I just had a little look. We hit 800 likes on last year's part one with Aston Martin. So do try and leave a like today let's see if we can hit 500 eventually and let's see if we can hit 100 in the first 24 hours that would be absolutely amazing so do hit that like button it really will help the channel out all of that good stuff so thank you very much uh, for your support with that uh, we are going to be doing a williams road to glory career mode in f1 manager 23 i'm really excited to do it we obviously led aston martin to glory last year and fernando alonso got two world championships we eventually ended with lewis hamilton getting his eighth world championship for aston martin and then we moved to mclaren and we did a season there where i think it was lando norris became world champion but um with all that being said let's get ourselves into career mode I will be checking out race replay and that sort of thing. They'll be in a separate series, but today this is going to be first impressions of the new career mode um, and how that goes. Before I continue, massive thanks to Frontier Games for the early access with this, allowing me to get ahead with some recording. And uh, yeah, really do appreciate the, the help with that as well. So let's get ourselves into it. I don't know what these buttons do. I'm assuming uh, that's a newsletter sign up. What's that? Is that the credits? I think it is. I think this is the credits. I'll be back in a minute. There we go. There was a back button from that. Right, Formula new career. One, Here we go. The pinnacle of motorsport. With a global audience and drama to match, all the attention is now on race circuits around the world. Waiting for the start of the fastest show on earth. Last year's regulation changes saw closer on-track battles. Anyone expecting a smooth ride from the 2023 season is in for a shock. With a shake-up in the paddock, resulting in the signing of several new team principals, F1 is primed and ready to light up the world stage. Team principals will already be talking tactics, boosting the confidence of their drivers and ensuring their pit crews make those box times as tight as possible. With a new era of racing now well underway, more teams than ever will be vying for points, podiums, and a chance at the championship. This is Formula One. Nice. So, uh, as far as I know, it is still a 10-year career. Red Bull um, took oh. the F1 world by storm in 2022, defending their driver's championship title and bringing home the Constructors' Championship for the first time since 2013. The new season will see the continuation of Dream Team, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. They're flying high on the back of their success, but they can't afford to rest on their laurels if they want to dominate 2023 in the way they did last year. Now, of course, we are going to take our absolute time with everything in this game. Uh, you know me, I, I like to take my time. Uh, I think we had a two hour video the first, the first time we uh, we played this game last year. I don't think this episode will be two hours, but I suppose you guys will know when you when you watch this. Um, you can see all of the stuff there. Obviously, Red Bull are going to be very, very tough to beat. A uh, new position of sport and director this year as well, so interesting there. I'm hoping that we get to see a, f a few of the staff members in there, but uh, I'm going to play through all of the intros so that you guys can hear them, and uh, then we'll we'll move on. On paper, Ferrari had a stellar season in 2022, taking home second place in both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships. But some high-profile errors marred their year, and second place felt like a poor consolation prize to what really could have been. Returning in 2023 with drivers Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz and a new team principal at the helm, they need to fix those past mistakes to be in with a chance of claiming that top spot. Okay, very good. Let's uh, move on. Mercedes now. 2022 was a tough year for Mercedes. Taking home third in the Constructors' Championship, they broke their eight-year winning streak. And although they eventually made up for an early slow start, it was too little too late. 
The team returned this season once again with the all-British driver pairing of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell, and they'll be aiming to claim back the crown. They've done it before, and they know exactly what it's going to take to do it again. OK, very good. Interesting Lewis Hamilton in car two. I think they're, they're going a little far, perhaps, there, but... Um... Very, very interesting, right? On to Alpine. In Alpine's debut 2021 season, they finished fifth in the championship. And in their 2022 run, they claimed fourth. But will the loss of veteran driver Fernando Alonso stall their entry into the top three this season? Or will Esteban Ocon, alongside fellow countryman Pierre Gasly, a new transfer to the team, be the fuel they need to break through? Only time and racing excellence will tell. Okay, you can see all of that. Fifth uh, on the car performance. Let's keep going. A frustrating finish last season for McLaren, who ended fifth in the Constructors' Championship, down a place from the year before. They return for 2023 with Lando Norris, the only driver outside the top three teams to earn a podium in 2022, and the highly sought-after rookie Oscar Piastri. With this ambitious lineup behind the wheel, McLaren are set to fight their way back up the grid this season. Okay, so eighth out of ten. Uh, interestingly, again, Lando Norris in car two. Uh, disagree with that. Okay. Very, very good. There you go. You can see all of that. Alpha now on Alfa Romeo, Romeo. showed off their fighting spirit in 2022, battling their way to sixth in the constructors' championship with an all-new driver pairing of Valtteri Bottas and Zhou Guanyu. The pair have proven they've got what it takes, and in 2023, they'll be returning to the track and looking to push their way back up the grid. The Hinville team begin the new season expecting to face tough competition from those battling it out in a very tight midfield. I've got to say I don't agree with uh, them being 10th out of 10, but... There you go. Aston Martin ended the 2022 season in seventh place, although sixth was almost within their grasp. Alongside significant investment and state-of-the-art facilities, this year could be their chance to shine. They've traded one multiple championship winning driver for another by signing Fernando Alonso after Sebastian Vettel's retirement. And with Lance Stroll rounding out their lineup, Aston Martin are primed to push their way up the standings. Haas finished last season eighth in the Constructors' Championship, an improvement over past years, but still far from desired. With Nico Hülkenberg returning to F1 to join the team, as well as Kevin Magnussen continuing in his seat, Haas have opted for a more experienced driver pairing on the grid in 2023. With the team's trademark perseverance, they'll be eager to convert that experience and passion into valuable points. Very good. It was a disappointing end to the 2022 season for Alpha Tauri, leaving them in ninth, their lowest finish since taking on the new name. But they can't afford to dwell on disaster if they're going to battle their way back up the standings. Now with the signing of Nick De Vries alongside returning driver Yuki Tsunoda, it's time for Alpha Tauri to shake off last year's troubles and prove they've got what it takes. And of course, finally, Williams. Tenth in the Constructors' Championship is not where Williams would have chosen to end 2022, but that won't stop them fighting. Debutant Logan Sargent joins for the new season after a stellar F2 performance, driving alongside his more experienced teammate Alex Albon. With the right leadership, the team is set to come out swinging in 2023. Well, very good. I mean, their car performance is seventh best, apparently. We've got Alex Albon, Logan Sargent and... Uh, Luke Dupont um, as our reserve driver. You can see there's our um, team, David Warner, uh, Adam Kenyon, Sven Smeets, uh, James Irwin, Guyton Diego. Okay, founded by the passion of the late Sir Frank Williams, this team fast became the behemoth of Formula One. Their history is one of a brilliant design and fierce competition, and in the past they've racked up plenty of impressive wins. The Williams family ceded their stewardship in 2020, opening up a new chapter for the team. But in 2022, despite showing promise and pace at times, they finished at the bottom of the standings. With new leadership, 2023 is a chance to start afresh and begin their long-awaited resurgence. Okay, let's uh, get into it then. So, uh, we will be... 
if I can delete this, there we go. We will be captain of, oops, of the uh, good speed variety. Um, there we go. Oh, what what's going on here? Why is that doing that? I've no, I've no idea. I don't know why it's doing that. Returning manager. Ah, there we go. So, new team principals are given full guidance. Return and manager will only be guided through the new and updated. I think that's what we want. Um, experience won't receive any. So, we'll go for return and manager. That's fine for me. And let's uh, start our new game. Here we go. Hi, I'm Audrey, one of the team engineers. I'll be on hand to help as you re-familiarise yourself with how things work and show you what's new. Okay, so Audrey's back, everyone. Whee! We're very excited to have you join us here at Williams. We're ready to put in the hard work and achieve our aim of becoming points contenders in the 2023 season. There's no time to waste. Okay, so this is the, the news home screen. I'm going to keep my ugly mug off for as uh, long as possible so that you guys can see the new screens and all of that um this looks great Interest i don't know is that fastest laps number of fastest laps that's a interesting statistic you can see there's the board you can see the confidence so lots of it is the same it's just sort of um, glammed up a little bit if you like so long-term objective is to be a points contender season objective this year is to finish eighth i think we can be capable of doing that they want to be points contenders by 2025 so we've got plenty of time to to turn everything around the board budget we've got 52 million uh, initial payment of 6 million and monthly payment of 4.2 we've got 19.8 million in the bank balance as it currently stands uh team rating you can see we, we are established um Obviously, we finished 8th in 2021, but other than that, we've been finishing 10th. So, anything could will be better than that, really. Um, we've won seven championships in the past and obviously entered 46 seasons. And there's our profile as manager. Okay, very good. And we've got uh, our history in there as well, which is nice to see. The rules and regulations all in there. Obviously, we've not seen any... Um, financial put potential financial uh, and regulation changes for next season we'll look at those as and when um there's the standings we've got the each grand prix preview in there as well miami gardens interesting um imola will be in there as well of course uh, didn't get raced in real life this year which was a shame uh, but we have got lasalle in there and we have got las vegas from the outset okay we have got uh, weather forecasts available in four days. Interesting. Right, let's uh, move back. Uh, back to home. Got the race preparations there. We've got Alex Albon. He's 81 to rated. The team is developing as desired. You can set up a targeted development plan for any of your drivers. Okay, so you can see um, he's pretty good in, in most areas. I think consistency is where we want to, if you want to head this towards. To specific areas of their development, you can do so here. So this is something different for 2023. Uh, each driver has a development rate, which demonstrates their potential to improve. As the season progresses, all, all the drivers may experience a deterioration. The better they perform, the longer they'll be able to resist development focus. Um, the staff member will only improve attributes associated with that. Other contributions for all their current morale will... Okay, so if they've got a high morale, that'll be good. Um, what I do want to look at... So what, where's his consistency? So accuracy, smoothness, cornering, that's kind of where we're looking at uh, developing. Yeah, pace on short runs might be one. Um, wet track well, yeah wheel to wheel is pretty good driving standards is good 
Uh, it's whether we want accuracy or corner, and I think we probably want his pace on short runs to be slightly better. Help his qualifying stuff. Facility bonuses, there's his contract, so he's got two more years on his contract. You can see his previous seasons in Formula 1. All very, very good indeed. Right, uh, back we go. Let's have a look at Logan Sargent. Obviously, he needs to improve his consistency as well, particularly smoothness and overtaking. So potentially that's going to be on... Um, well, balance will obviously do everything. Yeah, race strategy. I think that's going to be one that he's going to try and improve first. That's all good. And then we've got Luke uh, Dupont. And he is 66 rated at the moment. Definitely needs to work on his uh, long run pace. That looks like the worst one there. He's only got nine months left in his contract. Same with Logan Sargent. So we might think about scouting for some new drivers next year. Um, let's go to our inbox. So first day. It's very exciting to have you on board. Sponsor obligations. Um, when negotiating sponsorship deals, we offer certain obligations. That's all good. That's fine. Let's just have a little look at that. So we've got driver appearance. They want 14 of that. All of this looks very, very similar to last year. Okay, let's uh, go to the scouting then. Let's go and scout some new drivers, I suppose. Are there any free agents that are, that are there? I don't think so. It's down to F2 pretty quickly, isn't it? Um, I mean, obviously, one guy I'd be looking at is Nico Hulkenberg. You know, I love a bit of Nico. Um, so let's get some detailed scouting on him. I think he'd be awesome to have in the team next year. Um, Piastri, of course, but not going to be a, a real option. I think Mick Schumacher, that's a, a definite option there as well. So we'll, we'll get to um, scout reports on that. So let's have a little look at our staff in terms of development. What do we want to achieve with this? Yeah, probably, probably this one here, Grip and Traction. David Warner, now head of aerodynamics, definitely want to get some of those 68s done. Aero principles, that looks good to me. Race engineer, he looks pretty good, doesn't he? So I think keep him on balanced. Uh, definitely needs his feedback, so driver comms. Uh, probably that one actually, car analysis. Spawn director. Um, training, that would be good. Yep, drill planning. There you go, that will improve him. Pit crew, they are okay at the moment. Monthly salary looks good. Estimated stop time, 2.7. All right, cool. And development-wise... Can I edit? Ooh, I can. Goodness me. Their reliability and speed can make a big difference to a race outcome. When they're back at HQ in between races, the pit crew can train to improve in different areas. The pit crew development plan will focus on a balanced training approach, but you can give them further instruction and focus on a specific area. Okay, so there's presets for this. The pit crew are always so busy training. You can access the team's training schedule through the calendar and from there customize the current plan right down to a daily breakdown. I don't think we want to go that detailed. Just bear in mind that as the pit crew's job and therefore training is very physical, they can become fatigued and as a result, more prone to making mistakes. Remember, the constructor with the highest number of fastest pit stops will win the DHL fastest pit stop award at the end of the year. Once you're happy with the pit crew training schedule, make sure to confirm it. Okay. So what can we do? Raise and lower car. Okay, so we can focus on all of those areas. That's interesting. OK, 
Okay. Let's go for pit stop time then. Everything seems to work out if we do that. That's fine. Cool. Season performs. You can see that over there. Over there. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, good at good addition got the engineering team there and then the scouting team all good right let's have a look at our facilities facilities look decent at the moment we'll obviously try and upgrade those through the year but looking at a wind tunnel upgrade you're looking at 10 million straight away so we might need to just wait a little bit before we do that okay it's all looking good Race simulator might be one to, to try and get going. But yeah, I'm I'm not gonna do facility upgrades just yet. Right, let's have a look at our cars. Car part development. Ooh, so this all looks a little bit different. So shall we design a new bit of the car? I suppose we need to really know how it compares to the rest of the grid so car one rank on grid so we really need to improve possibly the chassis is that not going to be something underfloor is usually one that's good it takes a little while suspension looks like a good one so let's uh, let's get a bit of development going. So we'll add in some um, fluid dynamics hours. We'll put twenty hours of wind tunnel time into it as well. Okay. Aerodynamic car parts each way extra, and together we'll add weight to the car build. This will contribute to a reduction in certain areas of a car's performance. Designing aero parts with higher durability will increase condition life of a part, but any durability improvements will come with the payoff of extra weight. Lighter car parts will last for fewer races, making them more expensive on average. Okay, so I think we probably want things that are slightly heavier. Don't we? I think. Yeah. Give a give us a little bit of extra durability. Okay, that looks good. And then in terms of engineers, probably one four on there. Um. All right, thirty-one days. So that'll be ready for the twenty-third of March. Yeah, let's go for normal. I don't think we can get it in for the the first Grand Prix anyway. This is interesting. All very different, isn't it? Uh, side pods obviously been a very contentious one this year. Let's get some side pods going. And go for pretty much the same idea. That looks good to me. A little bit of extra weight. It's fine. I'm going to put three on that one. And that's going to be ready for... 30th of... Uh, or the, the 22nd of March, actually. And then we are going to go for... A big upgrade on our underfloor. And that's surely going to give us a little bit of extra performance. And that all looks good. We're actually going to rush that one, are we? Should we get that? Uh, no, it's because it costs so much more to rush it through. Right, that all looks good to me. Okay, um, let's push forward then. Continue to the race weekend. And we have some important info. So key staff. 
We have two excellent race engineers. Sponsor obligations. Welcome to the 2023 season. So there's the results of the pre-season test. Development update. Doesn't look like they've actually gained anything there. Okay. Right, training schedule. Go to pit crew development. Right, let's, uh, let's do that. Work on some pit stop errors. Continue to the race weekend. Let's get ourselves into the action. Okay, so at this point of the video, I just want to uh, uh, let you guys know, keep you in the loop. Um, I am going to be on the PS5 version for this year's game because for some reason I just can't stop the PC version lagging. Those of you that watched my uh, modded career mode with Mercedes will... I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, that was also happening with the PC version of uh, F1 Manager 23 for me. Uh, it probably won't happen for any of you guys, but uh, just wanted to, to let you know. Uh, big thanks to Frontier for hooking me up with a PS5 code to, to get this out to you as well. I, I really do appreciate the support from those guys. Um, so thank you very much for that. So without further ado, let's get ourselves into the weekend. Uh, here are the targets. Uh, it doesn't look like we've got any targets at the moment. I'm not... Oh, there you go. So we've got Reach Q3 um, with one of our drivers. That's not going to happen. Uh, but we will promise to reach Q2 and we will say we'll get one car into Q2 just to get a little bit of extra money. Uh, we are, are expected to get faster slap as well. I mean, are they having a laugh? That's not going to happen, folks. Uh, and finish position streak... Um, they want us both drivers to finish in the top 15. All right, we'll we'll leave all of that uh, there for now. Uh, I did try and get all of the developments the same way that we had them before. Uh, I did realise I didn't actually talk about any of the sort of rationale behind it. I want to keep with, with balanced uh, in terms of how we actually go about developing the car. Um, just for now, and then we'll maybe focus in on specific areas of the car going forward. But with our first upgrades, I just want them to be balanced, get a little bit of general performance on the car so that we can uh, progress going forward. But yeah, looking forward to it. Let's get into it and see what David Croft and Karun Chandok have to say. Welcome to Sakir. Doesn't it feel good to be back? Every team and driver comes here with the same goal, to win. But that's for the end of the season. For now, they have to prepare to fight for F1 glory. The Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. Williams are taking a gamble this weekend on a new driver. But you have to ask, will it pay off? It's time then for another thrilling weekend of F1 drama. Okay then, uh, all looks very, very good. Shall we get ourselves in uh, free practice one? By the way, seamless playing this on console. Um, I'm, I am blown away. I was a little bit sceptical going into it, but it is just as good as the PC version. Uh, these sliders are back. Um, I think what I want to do is actually go a little bit. Usually what I, what I used to do in last year's game is keep everything down the middle for first practice, then adjust from there. But I think I want to uh, experiment a little bit with Alex Albon. Uh, we'll keep it on balanced for Logan Sargent, but I think other than that, it should all be good. Okay, nice. Uh, for a run plan, uh, we'll maybe go for 14 laps. Driving options, just keep them on standard. Uh, and we want them on hard tyres, okay. Uh, as I say, for Logan Sargent, we will 
uh, keep it all balanced for him and we'll do a 15 lap run and if we want to in future sessions we can put Dupont in there but I'm quite happy keeping Logan Sargent for now and yeah we'll we'll keep going with that so let's get into practice one we'll manage this one and uh, I'll take you guys on the, the first lap on this game um, should we send Alex Albon out there immediately I'm waiting for the radio check. Okay, just getting used to the the cameras and all of that. So here we go. There, there goes Mr. Alex Albon into the attack. I'm very, very happy about that. He's off on his way. On off on his merry way. Radio check. Yes, coffee. And there's our yeah, radio Alex, check. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen every single session, but uh, just to whip through the different uh, camera angles, we've got the onboard, of course, we've got the uh, rear view camera, um, we've got the TV pod, then one at the front wing, but new for this year, we have got the visor cam, and I'm really, really excited to see how all of that goes. Um, let's up the aggression slightly, and then... We will join Alex Albon for a visor cam and our first lap in F1 Manager 2023. I'm looking forward to this. So here we go then. Alex Albon goes round the final corner and starts up his lap. Of course, he's going to pop on. Oops, we don't want to uh, pause it. That's fine. Um, and you can see lots of different things in there including driver confidence. Um, let's see driver preparation there. Then we've got our tyres condition there, our powertrain condition as well. All of that is in that menu now. You can even go further with it, which is interesting. To be honest, I've never heard so little group. All right, all right Alex. It's only your first lap, matey. Go and warm your tyres, then. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Right. Let's keep uh, on board. He's go coming up towards this very, very tricky turn nine. Very, very tricky, this corner. Easy to lock up, but he's looking good. I have to say, I, I do like this visor cam. But well, there's the off-board. through beautifully he flies through this middle sector absolutely awesome job and hopefully he'll be able to come out with some good feedback throughout this session so let's see what sort of time he puts in He's coming around the final corner, and Alex Albon zips up to the finish line. And what sort of time is he going to put in? It's a 138.4. Obviously nowhere near good enough for any sort of pole position time, but we're happy with that. Right, uh, I'll zoom on a little bit, and I'll show you guys what the feedback looks like in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we now have Alex Albon back into the pits. Uh, let's have a little look at his feedback. So you can see he's not very impressed with that. Uh, has prepared him quite nicely, though. You can see his traction is a little bit uh, dodgy. Now, I, I wonder if this is new for this year or whether I never noticed it last year, but if you have a look on the left-hand side where it says oversteer braking stability, you can see what effect will happen uh, with all of that. So if I move that to the left, then it'll move oversteer up. So, yeah, I mean, the, the straight is pretty good, so we kind of don't want to touch the, the rear wing angle if we can help it but uh, the front wing angle will give us a little bit more oversteer and that's fine um in terms of anti-roll probably want to up that a little bit and yeah some of them will change it by a lot more than than others um yeah that's looking a little bit better But 
but it is very tricky to please every aspect of the car. And sometimes it is just going to be down to the car's not very good. Um, but yeah, I am, I am struggling a little bit to get this where we need it. I'm guessing that the true zone must be much more that way than we're expecting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give that a go. That's all good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and we'll send them out there again on 13, 13 laps with uh, the same tyres. There's no point. Whoops. There's no point changing tyres, in my opinion. So we'll get them back out there. That's fine. Uh, seem to be going quite well on those hard tyres. And we'll see what Logan Sargent says. And I'll see you at the end of practice. Okay, so there we are at the end of FP1 then. Um, I have managed to plug in a keyboard and mouse for this, which is, is making it a little bit easier, actually. Um, and you can see uh, Alex Albon finished 15th in the end, Logan Sargent 18th. And I'm quite happy with that because we were one of the only drivers uh, out there on hard tyres. Uh, we'll definitely settle for that. Uh, there was plenty of crashes. A little bit worrying how many crashes there were in uh, P1 and two of them involved Lewis Hamilton. But Oscar Piastri and uh, Hamilton will have uh, penalties to serve on race day because of that. But uh, generally, pace looking good and uh, feedback looking good. So I'll see you guys for qualifying and hopefully we'll manage to pull off a good result. Well, have a look at that. Uh, sat up, uh, set up satisfaction for Alex Albon, not 100%. And uh, Logan Sargent, 96%. That is absolutely awesome. Really, really happy with that. So why don't we get ourselves into the action of race day? They've, they're coming in with decent confidence, uh, 85% and 83%. So hopefully they should be able to put in a good performance in qualifying. Hello and welcome to the much-anticipated qualifying session. Bahrain's track is dusty and abrasive, and even under the floodlights, qualifying is tough on soft tyres. Teams will need to use their tyre allocations wisely. So as we head into this qualifying session, Karun, how do you think Lando's going to be feeling? Looking at the lap times, we saw a real lack of pace from them in practice. They never looked quite comfortable with the setup, and they'll need to try something new for qualifying if they want to get past Q1. Buckle up then, folks. It's almost time for qualifying. Okay, here we go then. Into qualifying. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, you can see the practice results. Let's have a look at P3. That's always uh, the one that's pretty representative. Lewis Hamilton looking good, but Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez certainly seem to be a cut above the mustard. Um, McLaren looking pretty slow at the moment. In terms of sponsorships, can't add anything in there uh, for now. Quick look, little look at the expected strategies. We're expecting a two-stopper, so we want to look after as many uh, soft tyre sets as we can. So let's get into the action of Q1 and see how we get on here. Fingers crossed we can really pull out something good. Um, We'll send, we'll send Alex Albon out there as soon as that Alfa Romeo has passed. And there he goes, Alex Albon into the pit lane then. And off on his merry way. And I have to say, I think they have scaled down the graphics slightly uh, of the, the backgrounds of the circuits. Uh, the cars themselves and the tracks look brilliant, but that background, I feel like, looked better last year. But I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know down in the comments section. We'll put uh, Sergeant out there as well. And we can zoom it on a little bit. And we'll maybe ride on board with uh, Logan Sergeant this time. As he completes a lap of this Bahrain International Circuit. So here we go. Let's uh, ride on board with him as he sets up. So nothing. No now, unfortunately, one of the Haas cars has just come out at the end of the pit lane. Now, we certainly do not want traffic here. 
on our flying lap as we come round turn one. That's all looking good. We need that house car to stay well out of the way, and it certainly did. That's good to see because traffic was a massive problem on last year's game, but you can see we are well past at the moment. A uh, confidence level can be impacted throughout a race weekend, both negatively and positively, by on-track events. You can keep an eye on each driver's confidence level here. Okay. A driver with higher confidence will have an increased performance and a lower risk of on-track incidents. A driver with lower confidence will see a decrease in performance and have a higher risk of on-track incidents happening. Okay, fair enough. Uh, looks like Logan Sargent's actually quicker in the, the first sector. Uh, I'd like to see where his confidence is. Ah, there it is. You can see it's slightly above average, but uh, I suppose he had a little bit of a tour. Alex Albon getting a bit of a tour as well. But uh, here they come. Over the line, Alex Albon over the line to 133.4. That's slow. That is slow. I don't think. So he posted zero for Let's go in that. I, I imagine yeah, sure. it's uh, down to traffic more than anything else. Logan Sargent just green in that middle sector compared to purple in it with his teammate. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And here comes Logan Sargent up to the line. And it's a 133.3 or 4, actually, sure just dipped into the 4s. And actually, he is slower than Alex Albon. But uh, we'll take that at the moment. Hopefully, they'll. Be in a good good place for that. Right, let's uh, zoom that background, and it'll be interesting to see how the AI deal with qualifying because they used to all go out at the end of the session. But it seems like they're they're being sensible here and taking advantage of clear tracks. Uh, we are going to need uh, another set of soft tyres, unfortunately, for Alex Albon. Um, and for Logan Sargent, realistically, neither of those times are going to be good enough. But we're 14th and 15th as it stands. Obviously, quite a few guys didn't get their time in. So I'm going to send a Sergeant first. He's going to get himself out there. I'll leave it another minute or so and then send out Alex. And there he goes. So let's keep an eye on Sergeant Sector Times throughout this lap. Oh, he's caught up behind Pierre Gasly and it's a yellow first sector. This isn't good for Logan Sargent. I'm not sure he's going to be able to Make it through here, although he's green in the middle sector. What can he do as he heads up to the line? Here's Logan Sargent. And it's a 133.4. It's no improvement for him. And he's going to be out of qualifying on his debut. What a shame. P16 there. Alex Albon, is he going to be able to turn this around? Flag, That's the big question here. Is he going to be able to do it? He's coming around this middle sector. It was a green first sector. He's currently out of qualifying. It's a yellow middle sector. That's not what we need. We need him doing better than that. Oh, he's so close, isn't he? He just needs to find half a tenth and he'll knock out his good friend Lando Norris. He flies around the final corner. Can Alex Albon get himself into Q2? He's racing up to the line now. This looks like a good lap. It's a 133.3, which is better, but not quite by enough. And we have both drivers out in Q1.
It was so close with Lando Norris in the end, but couldn't quite make it stick. And uh, that will be that, I'm afraid. There's going to be no more times Pierre Gasly is the only one that could go above both of our drivers. And he does just that, and he knocks out Norris anyway. So eight, 17th and 18th on the grid for tomorrow. That's a, a very, very disappointing qualifying. Uh, but Lando Norris, P16, Oscar Piastri out as well. And Joe Guan Yu couldn't improve from his 35-9. Uh, Pierre Gasly just squeaked through in the end, didn't he, in P15 there. Uh, but Sergio Perez, quicker than Max Verstappen. All right, let's head into the race day then. Welcome to race day. And before we get down to it, last minute checks are being made. Bahrain has seen some of the most dramatic races in F1, like Sergio Perez's incredible 2020 victory, surging ahead from being last on the opening lap. Karun, what do you think of Logan Sargent's chances as we head into this race? They don't seem to be getting the best from the car right now, to be honest. Not sure if it's the balance or just an issue with confidence, but something needs to change. And there's going to be a lot for the teams to handle. So will the drivers and their cars be able to deal with the pressure here in Bahrain? OK, then, let's get ourselves into this Grand Prix. Um, as I say, it's going to be a two stop. Uh, luckily for us, we have got plenty of tyres to go through. Um, I'm thinking, Alex Arbon, why don't we? Oh, plan A, there you go. Trophy, that's what we like to see. Um, yeah, let's be a, a little bit more aggressive, perhaps. We can take them a little bit further into the race. Whoops. Yeah, that looks good to me. So we'll go for that with Alex Albon. Let's just check uh, fuel. I think... I think keep it like that. Let's just push from the start. Uh, don't think there is an overtake button anymore. We've got four options. We've got deploy, neutral, top up and harvest. Okay, interesting. And uh, we might as well be aggressive from the start and see if we can make up some positions. Going to be a little bit less aggressive with Logan Sargent. And I might go with a, a soft, medium, soft option. Plan C there. Um, be aggressive at the start. Prolong the middle stint. So we want that starting a little bit earlier and going a little bit sooner towards the end you can see being slightly more aggressive in the middle and that, that looks good actually 13 seconds better come the end of the Grand Prix we're gonna whoops we're gonna give him an aggressive start with his driver options and We'll actually deploy his ERS on the opening lap, see if we can get him nicely up the order. All right, here we go then for the first race of F1 here Manager 2023. I can't on, wait. And it's nearly time for 57 laps around the Bahrain International Circuit. You and I won't be the only ones keeping an eye on Oscar Piastri, Carew. P20 is definitely not where any driver would want to find themselves. But they've got to get their head down and work hard. And it'll be exciting to see just what will happen here today. And this is here we go then. The Five red Grand lights. Prix. And it's lights out. Wow, quick and release of the go. lights. Lights out, away we go. Perez off to a terrific start to this Grand Prix. Is he going to be able to hold off Max Verstappen as they head into turn one? No. Um, Verstappen cannot pass him Perez is into the lead of this Grand Prix Verstappen in second despite starting on the softer tyre Stroll has got past Fernando Alonso and Gasly in P7 
after just squeaking through Q1. Russell, P8, and uh, Lewis Hamilton, P9, as it stands. Let's have a little look at the tyre choices of everybody. Uh, most people, oh, well, actually, it's a 50-50 split, I think. 3, 5, no, it's 8, 8, 12. 12 on the softs and 8 on the medium tyres. Alex Albon stays where he uh, started this Grand Prix and seems to be uh, dropping back just a little bit here at the start of this race. Not entirely sure why but he can't seem to catch up to Lando Norris at this stage and does seem to be dropping off somewhat. But uh, Logan Sargent, meanwhile, he's having a little look at uh, Zhou Guan Yu, who's passed him at the start, and Oscar Piastri well and truly at the back of this race so far. But Lando Nor uh, Alex Albon definitely dropping off here. And okay, he's on the medium tyres, but you, you wouldn't expect this. So maybe we're just going to have to drop that back to balance, drop that back to standard. And play the long game a little bit with uh, okay. Alex. Tire short term. Copy. But for Logan Sargent, he can push a little bit more. This could be a chance to go down the inside of Zhou Guan Yu. And he does try, but doesn't manage it onto the kerb there. As Zhou Guan Yu desperately trying to get past Alex Albon here. And there he goes. I think that's going to be an overtake. No. Albon stays in front, but now nearly two seconds behind that group ahead. Okay, let's uh, let's let that run its course a little bit. Maybe Logan Sargent can make a manoeuvre. Oh, there's yellow flags, and it's uh, it's Logan Sargent, I think. I don't know what's happened here. I think it was Logan Sargent though that made a collision. And yeah, the there you go, and that might be the end of Logan Sargent's debut. Something's not right. Mm. Stand by. Yeah, the wing is damaged. Okay. Let's have a little look at his. Uh, it's got minor damage. Yeah, let's uh, replace his front wing. Don't need to change his tires. Particularly, so I'll do that and just bring him in at the end of this lap. Ah, what a shame for Logan Sargent. He was looking quite racy there, as well. Yeah, box, box. Right, let's zoom it. Oops, forward a little bit. So Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen fighting at the front. And then we've got the two Ferraris, the two Aston Martins, and then uh, Russell just behind Pierre Gasly at the present time. Sergeant in. Yeah, as I say, not going to change his tyres. There's not really any point in that. He's away in 13.5 seconds. Nice to see. But I just don't understand why we're so slow compared to Norris and... Bonus, etc. If a driver is entering a battle situation oh. where they might need the extra power for an overtake attempt or to defend against one, then you can direct them to deploy energy as they see fit through battle assist. Okay, so battle. Ah, so that's where the overtake button might come in now. Right, should we try and deploy our ERS and get Albon caught up a little bit? Because he's six and a half seconds behind. Lando Norris, and that's not where he should be. Be a bit more aggressive again. And you can see he said he's closing in a little bit, but not massively. Oh, he's now made up about a second, but if he can get into that DRS train, that'll massively help him. It's just about doing that. So we'll pop them onto neutral now. 
Hopefully he'll slowly build that up as uh, time goes on. In terms of Logan Sargent, unfortunately he's in a bit of a pickle. Um, might have to go standard. Oh, his tyres have taken a bit of a hit actually, haven't they? Oh, and Albon's locked up. Well, what a disaster. What a disaster. Now here we are at the final corner. And here he came and just locked up oh, his tires and he's off the track. Just the risk you take, the later you leave it. There you go. So let's get Albon's tires back up and running. Control. Yes. Now as he destroyed his tires a bit he has. So we're gonna have to move that back onto standard now. You can afford to drop back. Yes, copy. All right, we might have to have a look at uh, Logan Sargent's strategy. What can we do to help him out here? So. Ah, that's... Okay, so he's not actually... Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Right. Um, he could do a hard tyre, but I don't think that's going to be any better than... Whoops. Could we do two medium tyre stints? No, I don't think so. I think we're just going to have to go for the similar sort of strategy. I thought maybe we could get away with a uh, one last stop but I don't think so we'll just have to hope for the best we're kind of doing the opposite Albon now well, let's zoom it forward a little bit hopefully Albon can slowly but surely catch back up to Lando Norris Let's just have a little look at tyres. How are people getting on? Well, we're a long way behind the next medium tyre runner, but we are encouragingly a lot quicker than Oscar Piastri. So I'm, I'm hoping that once we're onto the soft tyres, we'll be able to make up some time, but we're just losing so much. We're, we're going to be almost a pit stop behind by the time the pit stops come. So that's a bit a bit of a tricky one. Anyway, the battle between the top four is uh, hotting up. Oh, and Sergeant, what are you doing, okay. matey? God's sake. Yes, thank you. Everything's all right here. He's just uh, having a horrible us. time, isn't and he? That certainly would Never mind. Track is full. Yep, copy. Yeah, we're going to go on to the hard tyres. We're going to see what you can do on them. Box, box. Copy, box. So when he comes... In the pit lane. And to be fair, he's not far off being lapped here. Albon's uh, tank's full now. So let's get him back onto neutral. And that's a slow stop. So Logan Sargent's day goes from bad to worse, and he is now lapped by the top four. Poor Logan Sargent on his debut, eh? Not having a great F1 debut, is he? Right, Alex Albon starting to make up a little bit of time to Lando Norris, but I'm talking tenths. Because Norris seemingly is out of that DRS train. Doesn't look like he should be, but he is. Nah, he's still losing time. It's good old Alex. So, I think dreams of a, a points finish in our first Grand Prix are pretty much shattered. Unless 
there's a safety car. And that could happen. Oh my god, Sergeant is going to be lapped by his teammate here. I think. And by the time this race is over, Logan Sergeant will have, oops, will have been lapped by Alex Arbon. And you're starting to think, well, what's the point? But there's always a chance of a, a red flag, especially this early in the race. Let's zoom it forward a little bit until the pit stop windows. And well, that sort of says it all, really. Hulkenberger pit stop ahead of us. In the Haas. Can Albon get past De Vries? Yes, he can. And he might be able to go and... push Norris a little bit once uh, we've swapped onto the softer tyres. Still a decent way out from our pit box. It's actually going to be lap 26 that Alex Albon comes into the pits. Oh, Verstappen had a pit stop issue. I'd like to have seen that as Nick De Vries sets the fastest lap of the race. Well, I never... There you go, Albon is officially now a pit stop behind Lando Norris. And it's fair to say this has gone wrong, as Perez has a pit stop issue as well. Lewis Hamilton has set uh, fastest the lap of the race open. now. Okay, I think let's get uh, Alex Albon in. Box this lap. So let's push him hard. Okay, box, box. Let's see what you can do. Close up. As Carlos Sainz now sets the fastest lap of the race, our race leader. So here we go. Let's uh, keep an eye on. Alex Albon's pit stop and see how he gets on here. Okay, back off. As uh, Valtteri Bottas just managed to pass him. Box. Now Copy. Logan Sargent, having a dreadful time of things, is about to get lapped by the two Hasses. That's pretty embarrassing, isn't it? But here comes Alex Albon trundling along the pit lane. So that this is a pit stop, but that's to be proud of. 2.6 seconds, that's all right. Okay, watch the white line on exit. Oh, and there you go. We now move up to 11th in the DHL. Top 10 pa uh, fastest pit stops. And I think there is a championship for that this year, which is very interesting, to say the least. Yes, yeah, so I'm now interested to see if Alex Albon can start making up some time on the cars in front. 22 seconds behind, it's not good. Actually, he is losing time, if anything. So it's been a, a bit of a dreadful Grand Prix for us, hasn't it? So far. Now he's starting to make up some time. Good to see. We can uh, push his engine a little bit. He's doing okay out there. There you go, now 20 seconds behind the next car. And he's well ahead of Oscar Piastri, I maintain that that's a pretty positive result. If that continues, let's just have a little look at uh, what tyres people are on. 
So yeah, all of that group are on the medium tyres, so this is where we should be taking advantage of that. And we'll try and do that. Logan Sargent, meanwhile, still trundling around in 20th place, halfway into this Grand Prix. And I think he should probably be able to take those tyres until the end of the race, but don't think it'll help. What we really need is a nice juicy safety car period. Just to bunch everybody back together. And I think he can do that, to be fair. I think once Alex is back in that group, I think he can do a good job. Meanwhile, Alex is gonna lap Logan Sargent. This is uh, this is not what we had planned. Let's be fair. But hopefully we can improve from here. Seventeen seconds now. The gap. When are we coming in? Uh, lap 38. I don't like how it doesn't tell you on this screen anymore. Does it tell you there? Ah, it does. There you go. So, lap 40 is essentially where we want to be coming in. Uh, shall we watch the moment live on camera? Alex Albon laps his teammate Logan Sargent. Not ideal. Sonora's um, got had it off as well. Now, but now within nine seconds of Yuki. So possibly by the end of the race he can catch them up, but it's going to be an almighty effort, isn't it? If he does manage it. 20 laps to go. Sergeant now lapped for a second time. And Perez is about to lap Esteban at uh, Alex Albon, sorry. And we are heading towards our pit strategy. So I think time to be aggressive on these tyres. Try and gain a little bit more time. see where he can end up. He is now within six seconds of Yuki Tsunoda. Piastri's just had a pit stop issue. So let's get him in. I'm going to say next lap. So Albon again going to absolutely give it full beans. I'm going to deploy his ERS Tell you what, Norris ain't far behind, is he? Don't know how he's caught up so quickly. Ah, oh, is this going to be a safety car? And now we've had a crash. Let's have a little look. What's happened? What's happened out there? It's the two Haas cars, and that is an incident. Oh, and that's not ideal for them, is it? And well, uh, I think they're continuing, it's not the way so it's not going today. to be a safety car. But yeah, Hulkenberg gets a penalty for that. And anyway, here comes Alex Albon into the pits. Box. The stitch. He might, uh, at the very least, get out ahead of uh, Nico Hulkenberg. That's Nick De Vries into the pit lane. And he's outperforming his teammate, Yuki Tsunoda, as well. There we go, a nice uh, pit stop for Alex Albon. 15 laps to go. Now Alex Albon being lapped for 
the first time, I believe. Okay, happy to manage tyre short term. And he's gone Copy. past his teammate Logan Sargent again. Yeah, those tyres aren't going to last, are they? I think. It's, um, let's get him in there. Let's get a, a new set of boots on him, and hopefully he'll be able to make the most of them. Box, box. Yeah, can't beat him. So, zoom it through. Keep Albon deploying. Can even perhaps stay with Max Verstappen. Oh, and Logan Sargent's had another pit stop issue. Let's have a little look at this replay. Logan Sargent making the stop. But there's a problem jacking up the car. Mm, and it was the, the... The jacks just got stuck. Well, what a shame. What a shame. But Charles Leclerc leading this Grand Prix. Followed by uh, Max Verstappen. We've got 13 laps to go. Perez makes the, the move. Sonoda running wide. He's only eight seconds ahead of Alex at the moment. Can Alex Arbon make a move? Should we try and get a faster slap for Logan Sargent? That would be rather delightful, wouldn't it? Go push, go push. Copy. I'll give him a push. Use your wrist. Copy. And hopefully I'll manage to to do that as Albon now within four seconds of Yuki Sonoda. So what your wrist? Copy. Need some retard. Copy. Where is Sergeant? No idea. Oh, he's uh, about halfway through the lap. Oh, fastest lap for Carlos Sainz. He's just uh, passed Alex Albon on track. So that is one thing to consider. We can be about a, a lap under fueled because we're not going to have the full amount of laps. I'll tell you what, we're, we're not far behind the group of Sonoda and De Vries. If we can follow signs through a little bit, that's going to help us with that. Because they're going to have to really slow down here for Carlos. on aggressive now and balance we don't want to embarrass him any further so Albon now under four seconds away from Yuki Tsunoda but I don't think he's going any quicker than him so I think 17th is going to be our limit folks and that's going to be a real body blow because I was expecting you know being the seventh fastest team I thought we could possibly compete for the final point today but it's not quite happening it's very uh Noah's arc isn't it Perez Verstappen then Leclerc uh, Sainz then Alonso Stroll Hamilton Russell Gasly Ocon it's uh, very mixed up isn't it uh <laughs> Noah's arc <laughs> well we have got five laps to go in this Bahrain Grand Prix And Logan Sargent, 20th place at the moment. And a uh, minute 22 behind the nearest competitor. It's really quite desperately sad how bad he has been today. So, not long to go. 
Jump on within three seconds now, it is. It's getting closer. Are people's tyres dropping off? Not particularly. But maybe we're slightly better on our tyres than, than others out there. And Botta seems to be the, the cork in the bottle here. I mean, if we could get up to 16th, that'd be awesome. I'd certainly take that. Getting on towards final lap territory now. Hulkenberg locks up again. Push to close this gap. I'm going to try and attack the tyres. I think you can reduce lifting post. Yeah, copy. And he's within 1.7 seconds. So last lap for Sergio Good Perez coming. in this Bahrain Grand Prix. Like to reduce like cup. Copy. And now he's flying around the final corner. And here we go. Let's see, 1.4 seconds is the gap. I don't think he's quite going to manage it, but he's pretty close. Bless him. This is the final lap. He is very, very close. 1.2 seconds now, the gap, and it's Bottas that's dropped back here. In fact, uh, Nick de Vries has managed to jump all the way up to 14th. It could be Bottas that we managed to overhaul here, and I'm not quite sure what's happened to him, but his, his car seems to have let him down. We're now within DRS. Are we going to see Alex Albon make an overtake in this race? Please. He's not going to have... Is he going to have DRS? I think he is. I think he is. So here we go. Let's enable a uh, battle assist here for Alex Albon. He's got DRS. Is he going to be able to go down the inside? Not quite. He had a little look, but couldn't quite pull it off. He's right behind Valery Bottas here. Can he get up to 16th? He is so close to passing him. He pulls out, and here he goes. Alex Albon. Is he going to go down the inside? It's Perez that's won this Bahrain Grand Prix. I don't think it's going to happen for Alex Albon. But at the very least, we've shown that we can be competitive with some of the other drivers. DRS open, but it's not enough. He finishes in 17th place, and it's a disappointing outing, really, for the Williams team because here's uh, Logan Sargent, and he's going to be P20. He's had a mistake ridden day, of course, spun early on, uh, crashed into. Um, one of the cars was Joe Guan Yu earlier on. So he's had a horror of a debut. Two pit stop errors as well. But uh, he finishes the race. He's coming round the final corner. And he's going to finish in 20th position. 20th and last. Uh, which is a shame. But there it is. And uh, well, the animals came two by two. Other than McLaren and Alfa Romeo. On ourselves, I suppose, but uh, yeah, disappointing that we couldn't get towards the points. But we will try once again next time out in Saudi Arabia. We will give it a little rethink, and uh, we couldn't have done any better with the setup. Setup was perfect. It's just one of them, one of them things, isn't it? Uh, but Nico Hulkenberg's going to be the last to cross the line. Obviously, he's going to get five seconds added to his time as well, but. Uh, Stays in 12th place ahead of Lando Norris. I'll be honest now, it'd take a real optimist to find anything good about Alex Albon's race. <laughs> you know, I don't Harsh. think many would have expected to see them finishing outside the top 10. They'll be aiming much higher than that, I assure you. No stranger to the podium, the Mexican driver now takes his place after another remarkable race. Their first win of the season, and the team looking on will be very proud, I'm sure. Well, there's the sight we haven't seen for a long time. They kick things off in style here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Very, very good. Well done, Sergio Perez, and hopefully he can keep it up. 
And you never know, we now, might get... Me, no doubt there'll be a lot for the teams to process after that race. But how do you think the Williams team are feeling? It's not been the greatest weekend. Both drivers need to step up and show what they can do. And the team have to be there to support them. And that is about that for this weekend's action here in Bahrain. In the next round, we head to the shores of the Red Sea as Formula One returns to Jeddah for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Now, I was a bit worried that uh, Karun Chandok wouldn't be in this game, but uh, he is very much in it. And there you go then. Sergio Perez wins the race ahead of uh, Max Verstappen in second. Leclerc finishes third ahead of Sainz. Alonso and Stroll fifth and sixth. Hamilton and Russell seventh and eighth. And Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon round out the top ten. There's the Drivers' Championship, as you were. Uh, fastest lap went to Carlos Sainz in the end. Constructors is the interesting one, uh, as Red Bull are leading the way by 43 points. Um, in terms of fastest pit stop, that went to Alpine's Esteban Ocon. Uh, we didn't get anywhere near the top 10, although that's something to aim for. McLaren are top of the pile in terms of that. Um, and our report, well, two horror shows for Logan Sargent, but two good ones for Alex Arbon. Okay, then, uh, that is going to be everything, I think, in this first episode. We've got uh, 2.7 million that's come in from that Grand Prix, and that'll uh, help us out with our balance a little bit, and we should be into the 20s now, I believe. Yeah, 24 million pounds, that's what we like to see. So fingers crossed we can put that to good use in the next episode. But that is where we're going to leave it for today. Um, I will put my ugly mug back on the screen for the, the final shot, if you like, um, of this video. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. Obviously, uh, no big light on, at least, uh, when it's console gameplay but a massive thank you once again to frontier for uh the code firstly for the pc and uh, for hooking me up with the the ps5 code because that's uh, really really helped um to, to get this content out to you and it looks beautiful it's smooth and uh, to be fair i've really enjoyed it on the console um i might give the the controller a, a full go next episode i just wanted to to stick with what i was familiar with today uh it's a massive day for the channel so i really would appreciate any support that you can give uh, by leaving a like down below share it with all your friends subscribe for plenty more f1 manager videos and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye